Hello beautiful people, hey T fam, welcome back to another video, Tamina here and I make university lifestyle videos and fashion videos and for today I thought I'd just mix it up a little bit. I've been wanting to do this for a while, I've been wanting to have segments on my channel where I just talk about random topics that we go through as humans in life, you know, day to day and that's why I have my sunset light over here to provide a nice little vibe because I want this to be a nice safe space where we talk about things and you guys can tell me your opinions in the comments and yes, I actually asked you guys what topics you'd love to talk about on my channel and you guys mentioned confidence and self-love and that's what today's topic is about but mainly confidence in a world full of self-hate this video is also inspired by trinity i watched her video last year and i really liked it and i've been wanting to just talk about topics because i like talking so yes that's what we're gonna be doing today i have my ginger hair let me tell you guys i've been wanting to dye my hair ginger for the longest time but i got nervous and i said you know what i'm gonna do i'm going to first buy a wig and see how it looks see if i can commit you know avoidant attachment here and i decided i kind of like it but i want to see how i because the thing with me is i could wake up two weeks from now and completely hate it so i don't want to make a permanent decision before i'm like sure and that was even my problem with like my tattoo because i was like i don't want to wake up and hate this tattoo but anyway anyway let me stop rambling let's get to today's topic today's topic is all about confidence in a world full of self-hate we all know the world is full of so much self-hate so i thought let me start with what my definition of confidence is and then i'll tell you guys a little bit about my experience with self-hate and building confidence so first of all confidence to me is the ability to be completely yourself yourself is a keyword here loudly and proudly because yourself has a lot let's unpack yourself yourself has beauty yourself has talent yourself has skills like you yourself you're so much in one person so it's the ability to be all that loudly and proudly now i think you get my definition we can get to a little bit about my experience so my experience with confidence has always has been shaky like anyone else's i feel like so as a child i feel like i was very confident very confident very like secure in my abilities i was such a confident child i remember we used to have these little estate parties um when i lived in a big estate and we'd go with my parents and it was always like parents would go with their children and we'd always have this thing where like children would have to introduce themselves and their parents as well um so i remember i introduced myself once so confidently that my parents got a free bottle of wine because they were like wow your child is so confident and this went on for a while i remember i was so tiny let me tell you guys i was tiny i used to be called teletubbies because i was so tiny and big i was like a little bouncing teletubby just walking around the estate anyway we had gone for the nairobi show and the guy on the desk was on a high desk so i was so short he couldn't see me with just like normal vision he had to look he had to like stand up from the desk and look down and I remember I was talking so loudly, I was like, we're at the show, we're... and then he was like, who's that with such a big voice and such a little body, and he was like, enter for free. So such things were happening, and I feel like at that time, my confidence was very high. I was very loud and proud about my skills and abilities, and even when we would have hours in a primary school that was day school, and we would have these things on prize giving day or something where they would tell the students okay come and you can perform you so you would audition and then if you are good enough you'd perform on the actual prize giving day and i was so committed to this cause i was so committed because teachers would have their own groups where they teach them like poems to perform and all these things i said you know what i said we're gonna have a group i'm gonna have my own group so i would create my own group at, at like recruit people and then we'd have our own group i'd teach them the song i teach them the choreography we'd be serious we'd be color coordinating clothes and um we were rejected every single year <laughs> i remember this once i was so sad we were rejected i came home my mom had bought me huba booba a big one and she was like so that's my comfort gum i even saw it today in the supermarket i was so excited she bought me huba booba because i was sad i was like why is it we're rejected every year are we not good enough you know um so that's what started that's what started to kind of like hit my confidence a little and i remember i had to go back because it was so embarrassing because i told you teachers used to have their own groups and then students would never make their own group so when we were rejected we had to go to the teacher's group to do like her poem i was like and when we came she gave us the look for like nice try but yeah <laughs> so yeah that was basically me in primary and in primary i remember people used to make fun of my features i used to be called fish lips but this never got to me i was like okay fish lips but what but what 
So anyway, we go into high school and I feel like this is high school is basically its own echo chamber. Like high school is a place where that has rules that apply only to that high school. Like I feel like each high school has different rules. Some are the same, but I feel like they're very different also depending if your school is mixed or if your school is a single sex school. So for me, I was in a mixed school and I feel like it was also a boarding school. That's a very important detail. It was a boarding school and it was a mixed school. So in mixed schools, of course, comes the hierarchy, right? The societal beauty standard, but for this specific place. So of course, my high school had its own beauty standards and you had to reach certain beauty standards to be able to do things, imagine. So I remember this time this girl was talking and a guy was like, listen, shut up because you're not even pretty. Like, why are you talking? And I remember thinking, oh wait, what does talking have to do with prettiness? And then that's when I realized, hmm. So what happens is there's a societal beauty standard and this beauty standard creates a certain hierarchy. So the higher you are on the hierarchy, the more you're able to do certain things. The lower you are on the hierarchy, the more people feel like either your opinion or anything that you think is completely invalid. They don't even want to listen because you're talking as who? You're talking as someone who's at the bottom of the barrel, right? And I remember thinking that's so messed up. So I went on a mission. This mission actually started a bit late primary and then early high school where I was trying to be as invisible as I could because in my mind I thought the more invisible I am, the less people are going to notice some of the ugly or some of the ways that I don't attain the beauty standard, right? So it was like the more invisible I am, the more people, less people are going to notice me and the less people are going to pick out these little things in me that don't fit the beauty standard, something like that. Also, I was very slim and again, the beauty standard at that time in Kenya especially or in Africa as a whole was to be thick and everything. So I was like, listen, I'm not thick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wear the longest dresses. I'm going to wear the biggest hoodies. I'm going to hide my entire body because I don't like it basically. And also the hiding of the body was also towards me being invisible because if I hide it, then what can you really pick out? Like I'm hiding my body. So what are you going to say? You can't even see my body. <laughs> So yeah, this is basically it and also my confidence was really going down. Like if you met me, the me who used to teach people choreography and music in primary and the me here who would only do things in front of people if it was for a grade, you'd be shocked. It's two different versions of myself, right? That's why I said yourself is very important here. Yeah, so my confidence really went down without me noticing it. I feel like in my head, I was al it was always like, when I get out of here, I'm going to rebuild this. I never tried to build it while I was in high school. I was like, I've accepted my fate. I've accepted the rules of the game here and I'm going to apply to them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to be as invisible as possible so y'all can leave me alone. <laughs> That's what I was doing. So let's say past high school, I didn't even take time to actually realize what was happening in high school and all the very harmful, um, what can I call them? Like harmful ideologies that we had built in high school about beauty and about confidence and how you had to look a certain way to even be able to do certain things. And I didn't realize how harmful this was um, until I started like getting into relationships, right? And putting them in quotes because it's like was it really a relationship don't cancel me for that but yes anyway so what happened was i started to build my whole self-esteem around what someone else would think of me if someone else found me beautiful then is when i was like okay then i'm beautiful and so if that person was like tamina you need to add weight because why can't you be thick like so and so like you need to be thick like her there was a day i was actually walking with this guy I liked and he was like why aren't you thick like her and at that time my brain thought oh my god actually why am i not as thick as her tamina let's go on a whole diet let's go google how to add weight let's make it our mission to please this man listen that's what we call it growth okay because me right now my question to that man would be why don't you go for someone thick this is another thing that um, I feel like people project their own insecurities into other people because this is why I have a million dollar question And this is why where we need to answer this question. Actually, you guys tell me what you think. So my question is right If you think I'm ugly Right, you think I'm ugly How is that a you problem? It sounds like it's very much a me problem because I'm the ugly one. Why are you why are you trying to bully me because I'm ugly? It's a me problem. I'm the one who has to live with my ugliness. 
or does it bother you that I have the audacity to love myself even though I look like someone who should essentially hate themselves or even if I have certain features that I should hate does it bother you that I actually love them and if it bothers you why does it bother you why do you want to knock me off my self-love just because society says I shouldn't love myself that's the question I feel like we need to answer but yeah so basically that's my first question and my second question is if you have a type right everyone has a type everyone has someone they're sort of attracted to more than others go for that type you know like let's make life simple go for that type because it really boggles my mind that for example sometimes there'll be someone who likes thick girls and then he'll go for a slim girl and tell the slim girl to become thick or someone would is a misogynist right so they don't like feminist girls and then they go for that feminist girl and try and make her a misogynist i don't get it go for your type go for your type because i feel like in that way even the way that you start bullying someone and telling them they're ugly it's like why does it bother you that i'm ugly it's a me problem again does it bother you that I actually love myself even though you feel that I should hate myself? And if that bothers you again, ask yourself why. Yes, so as you can see, there's been a lot of growth and I'm here to tell you guys how I grew my confidence is first of all, I removed myself from the societal view, the societal perception. I didn't want to know if society would find me beautiful. I wanted to know if I find myself beautiful. And so I came up with my own beauty standard that I apply to myself. It's funny because people were making fun of me for having a big nose, but I'm not, I, I'm African, like I'm Kenyan. If you check my ancestors, they have big noses too. Like this is not a surprise. Why? I don't get it. Like, I don't know how to explain. Like we apply Western beauty standards, Eurocentric beauty standards to an African face and tell them since you do not look like this, then you are ugly. Meanwhile, how would they look like this if that's not their ancestry? You get what I mean? So I started to develop a beauty standard that apply a beauty standard that applies to me and my ancestral roots. Like I am Kenyan, I am Luya. So how do my ancestors look? They look like this. Then that's basically my beauty standard as myself. And so I started to apply my own beauty standard. I started to develop my own beauty standard and to know that even if someone else doesn't think I'm pretty, that's fine because I think I'm pretty. You know what I mean? Like if someone comes and comments on my photo, you're ugly. It's like, and so then what? <laughs> what happened? That's a me problem. And I don't know why it's bothering you that I'm ugly. But yeah, so I developed my own beauty standard. That was the first step. And it's funny because um, self promo. <laughs> So that's my card pack and there's a part of it in the implementation it's divided into three it has 50 cards on questions um, affirmations and implementation so one of the implementations is to develop your own beauty standard for yourself and I think that's something that really helped me because it's like I applied that to myself you know I applied to myself and it works because then if someone else doesn't find me beautiful then that's a them problem it's not it's not a me problem because I don't use the societal beauty standard metric on myself. I use my own beauty standard on myself. Second thing I did to develop confidence is to slowly start believing in myself again. Told you guys there were multiple rejections when I was in primary that completely hit my confidence and told me that maybe, maybe, just maybe, I do not have any talent. Um, I used to sing a lot, not that I've started singing again, but I started slowly believing in myself in the things I can do well because sometimes people think it's cockiness to believe in yourself in what you can do but I feel like cockiness is when you start to think you're better than other people whereas confidence is like you just are aware of your strong points and your strengths and your skills and so I started to explore that a lot more with creativity starting to know what kind of works for me where I'm most talented in and I grown more confident because even sharing some videos on instagram take a lot of confidence i feel like because it's essentially like sharing your work out there for it to be critiqued or for it to see how it performs on the instagram algorithm and sometimes you can end up thinking you're not talented but the thing is if you believe in your skills then 
it's just going to be like I need to do better or I need to do something else to get it out there but it's like we shouldn't stop believing in our skills because of um, what people tell us about our skills guess what I mean this all comes back to the whole believing in yourself I feel like you yourself you're such a powerful system in yourself if you believe in yourself if you believe you're beautiful if you believe you're talented then you block out the outside noise and just focus on your vision and what you believe in yourself of course invite the critiques because you know you're not perfect we're not all perfect and there's some people who've been in the industry longer so when they give you critiques it's like okay but hate there's a difference between hate and critiques i feel like listen to the critiques do not listen to the hate um jackie i now said something about um, how can you how can you hate on me if you've not constructed something how can you give constructive criticism without constructing something and I was like see hate is when someone is just plainly hating on your work and criticism is when someone is telling you how your work can be better and I feel like that's what we need to listen to um the other thing I feel like is very important when you're developing your confidence is to spend a lot of time with yourself right and this is like oh Tamina yeah but no spend a lot more time with yourself because that's the person you're going to take out into the world that's the person you're going to present to other people you need to spend a lot of time with yourself so you can actually wonder oh hmm, how am I how am I to like chill with how am I to do this with what are my skills what what are my talents you know Am I, do I find myself beautiful or when I leave the house and someone tells me I'm ugly I'm gonna want to never come back out again you know and I feel like that's very important because the more time you spend with yourself the more you know yourself and the more you're able to defend some of these things in your head when people tell you things like when someone tells you something you're like mm, but I know that I am this and someone tells you more hate you're boring it's like no but I know I'm interesting you know like I spend a lot of time with myself I should be the one who knows yeah um the other thing I feel like is very important is affirmations I feel like okay again you like to me now um but no affirming yourself is so important like I kid you not the thing that improved my body confidence so much I used to wake up I'd shower and then I'd come. I have a full length mirror and I would stand in front of my full length mirror, put on music and dance and just move my body and watch myself moving my body in the mirror and I'd be like, wow, I'm so beautiful. Like I would be telling myself, I'm so beautiful. My body is so beautiful. Like I am literally ethereal. I don't know how to explain, but I would affirm myself so much in the mirror while looking at myself. And this built up my confidence so much because it felt like I mostly needed it for myself. I needed this affirmations for myself because I feel like if you rely on other people's affirmations versus your affirmations, people's affirmations end. People cannot affirm you every day. Someone will tell you they like your project today and they'll not be seen again tomorrow. Or the next time you release your project, maybe people won't like it. But if you're there to affirm yourself, if you're there to hype yourself up, if you're there to gas yourself up then it's like when other people gas you up or when other people hype you up or affirm you it's just adding so it's like you're already you've already filled your cup with affirmations and then people just add other than leaving your cup empty like please affirm me please affirm me and then when people don't affirm you you're like uh, is it really that great I have the best example like if you wear a fire outfit and you've looked at yourself in the mirror and you said this is a fire outfit and then you go outside and no one comments on your outfit. See, if you rely on other people's affirmations, you're gonna go home like, maybe, maybe my outfit wasn't that fire. But if you rely on your own affirmations, like my outfit is fire, and if no one tells me it's still fire, but if people tell me, then it's like, oh yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what I think. The other thing about confidence that I really, really, really want to talk about is the thing I was telling you the invisibility cast so I feel like generally in society society wants people to shrink themselves in order to not be seen I don't know how to explain but I feel like society has this thing where it wants you to shrink yourself don't be too loud and proud especially for women it's like don't be too loud and proud like know your place like know your place as a woman 
you know know your place as a child society is constantly trying to tell us to know our place and to just shrink ourselves i'm going to give you a very good example so for ex mm, i feel like like even this hair if i was not confident right this hair is comes off as people will tell you you're too much you're doing the most and it's like but why would i want to do less it's a million dollar question. Why would I want to do less? I don't understand why I would want to do less. If I'm doing the most, isn't that a good thing? I don't even understand how that is an insult. And I don't understand why we used to associate this with something bad. Like doing the most is something bad. There's different to doing the most. Like when you're doing too much, when you're not supposed to do too much. Especially if you're making other people comfortable. But I feel like with general things like with your talents, with your fashion, with your opinions, please kindly do the most. Please do the most because why not? Why not do the most? If I want to come with my hair looking like this, then I'm gonna come. If it's the way people keep asking like, why were you dressing to like, just wear casual. Why should, why should I be casual if I don't want to be casual? Why should I not dress up? You know, like some of these things which are associated or are viewed as bad things, like dressing up too much, dressing up, not too much, but dressing up and, you know, doing your makeup really nicely when you feel like, wearing a really fire outfit, wearing really bright colors, wigs, big things. I don't know why they're associated to like a negative view because kindly do the most. Yeah, basically that's it for today. Tell me what you thought about talks with t and tell me your opinions in the comments maybe how you built your confidence or what you think about some of the things i said and i'll see you guys in the next one bye t fam